Hello booktube! So, today I will make my review of Deadline in Jakarta by Ian Stewart. Full disclosure, this is a very obscure book. There is very little information about it on, the, on upon a Google search. There are some copies of this book available on sale on eBay. But uh, yeah, not a lot of information on this book. This book was published in 1981 during the Suharto years, the Suharto dictatorship, uh, four years before I was born. And it is, not, it is a political thriller, but because it's less than 250 pages, it doesn't quite qualify as a airport novel. So I'm going to rate this book a 9 out of 10 because it speaks to me. Uh, it ha it, I'm biased towards it. Uh, there is one criticism which I will get to shortly, but um, yeah, this book uh, speaks to me as to how much as to my potential. If I can write a little bit more exciting and well put together plot, and if I can write a little bit more daring in my prose, uh, I could be as good as this guy. Uh, I just need to make the story a little bit longer. And the, there is some Indonesian italicized words in there. I also do that in my books. I often include a glossary, but uh, this man does a, the immediate translation comes uh, after the italicized words. So this book, uh, again, this book is a potential of what I can write. This is what I should aspire to write, being an Indonesian, and if I want to write books about my hometown, of uh, things happening where I live. Now let's go on to what the book is about. So in 1981 there are some anti-Japanese uh, anti sentiments because the perception is the Japanese, Japanese private companies are exploiting the Indonesians economically. And so this anti-Japanese sentiment, there's a populist uh, politician, activist, agitator type called uh, Subroto, who is a lookalike of Indonesia's first president. Um, he is leading these anti-Japanese anti rallies and he is assassinated. And then with the with these uh, with uh, this unrest happening this anti-japanese unrest happening in indonesia the indonesian government the suharto dictatorship is forced to respond by cutting off diplomatic and economic ties with japan and meanwhile in japan uh, the japanese government is uh, under pressure from militaristic and right-wing forces to uh, respond militarily to Indonesia, making a de demanding that they do not take this course of action of cutting off t uh, economic and uh, diplomatic ties, because they will respond militarily. And it's, this is not a spoiler because it's written on the blurb here. Japan has built a secret nuclear bomb and threatens to nuke Jakarta. Meanwhile, China doesn't like this uh, interference in Indonesian affairs and threatens to go to war, re threatens to nuke Japan in, in return. And Japan's uh, American allies threaten to nuke uh, China as well as Russia, the Soviet Union as well. So this is a build-up to World War III with interlocking alliances uh, similar to the uh, lead-up to World War I. Uh, what's interesting is this is not a uh, Soviet Union versus the West. This is not NATO versus Warsaw Pact political intrigue. This is the non-aligned intrigue. So these are countries that are not in the East versus West um, Cold War, but they have their own private um, conflict going on. So that's an interesting take on the world uh, on uh, the Cold War years. It's an interesting take. Now, uh, so the main character is a man named Martin Brickell. Brickell? Uh, it's a weird last name. He, uh, Martin works as a diplomat in the American Embassy in, in, in Jakarta. 
and he witnessed this assassination of this political agitator and he embarks on a quest to find out who was responsible for the assassination. And I'm not going to tell you who the villain is, who is ultimately responsible for the assassination, um, because I want you to read this book. But he embarks on this quest, and, uh, and everywhere he turns, there is political intrigue. There are, there are people out to kill him, to cover up the conspiracy, cover up a conspiracy. So, that's basically it. Now, like I said, uh, I am biased towards this book because it speaks to me. And, yeah, um, oh, the, and the author was right. When there is an anti-foreigner sentiment happening in Indonesia, in 1998, uh, anti-Chinese riots led to the overthrow of the Indonesia of the dictatorship in 1998 that led to the overthrow of the Suharto dictatorship so when there is a moment of crisis and uh, and nationalistic um, fervor going on in within Indonesia that could lead up to um, the overthrow of a government so Ian Stewart was right uh, in 1981 because it ha- that is exactly what happened in 1998 I, by the way, a fun story. I was actually a refugee in 1998. I was, uh, let's see, uh, 13 years old, and uh, I was a refugee in Singapore uh, during the anti-Chinese uh, riots happening in Jakarta. Uh, the Dutch literally airlifted us out of Jakarta. True story. I was a 13-year-old boy back in the day. 1998. So yeah, this book brings back memories. Uh, I greatly enjoyed it. Um, It is uh, what I should aspire to be as an author, reading it. So uh, yeah, read uh, Deadline in Jakarta. Highly recommended. 9 out of 10. The one criticism, the one criticism I have of this book is it's from the perspective of an American. So an American is out to save the day from all this uh, political tension, all these political, all these misunderstandings between parties. An American saves the day when it should have been a local, it should have been an Indonesian who saves the day. But uh, I understand what Ian Stewart was going for. He was, um, he was trying to uh, portray it as um, outsiders looking in and trying to play third-party mediator. So I understand what he was trying to write, but still, I would have preferred if it was an Indonesian who saved the day. He also has an Indonesian uh, uh, ally in the police force, a guy called Rusmin, who also helps Martin Brickle, who also helps this American diplomat. Um, find out who was responsible for the assassination. So I guess that uh, evens things out a bit.